Good day, everybody. This is Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. This is going to be a demonstration of the interior of the larynx and the larynx of pharynx from the posterior aspect. Just to give you a quick overview, this is an XI specimen from a cadaver. And I'm holding it by its side. So this is the larynx. We can see this is the hyoid bone. This is the thyroid cartilage. Below that is the cricoid. This is the thyroid gland. And below the larynx, we have the trachea here. And if you see from the side, posterior to the trachea, this is the esophagus. Just like we have the trachea and the esophagus, above each of them become known as the larynx and the pharynx. More specifically, the laryngopharynx. And that is what we are seeing here. So just to bring you up to speed, so this up here, this is the hyoid bone. This is the body of the hyoid which has been cut. Below that, we can see this structure here. This is the thyroid cartilage. And we can see this is the superior thyroid notch. This is the laryngeal prominence. This is the lamina of the thyroid. And down below, we have the cricoid cartilage, the ring of the cricoid cartilage. And further below, we have the tracheal rings. Each of these are attached by means of various ligaments. We have the thyrohyoid ligament, the median and the lateral thyroid ligament. Then we have the cricothyroid ligament between the thyroid and the cricoid. And then we have the cricothyroid ligaments, which hold all these cartilages together. The point to be noted is that the only skeleton in this thing, which is bony, is the hyoid bone. The rest are all cartilages. Most of them are elastic cartilage or hyaline cartilage. Having mentioned that, just quickly, these are the remainders of the infrahyoid strap muscles. This one is the superior belly of the omohyoid that we have cut. This is the sternohyoid on the right side. This is the sternohyoid on the left side. All the other muscles, strap muscles, we have completely removed. We have cut open the posterior aspect to show you the interior. So let's first take a look at the laryngopharynx here. The laryngopharynx is composed of this muscle here. This is mostly the thyropharyngeus muscle because it takes origin from the thyroid lamina. Lower down, we can see that the laryngopharynx becomes very narrow. I can see it here. It becomes very, very narrow. This is the cricopharyngeus muscle, which is the upper esophageal sphincter. This laryngopharynx, most of it is occupied by this dilated space here, where my thumb is located. This is called the pyriform fossa. This pyriform fossa is a very important location because this is where foreign bodies can get impacted, especially fish bone. So what are the boundaries of this pyriform fossa? The pyriform fossa is bounded laterally by the muscle of the pharynx, inferior pharyngeal constrictor. It is bounded by the lamina of the thyroid cartilage. Superiorly, it is bounded by this fold of mucous membrane. This is called the pharyngoepiglottic fold. Why is it called the pharyngoepiglottic? Because this is the epiglottis. So therefore, this is the pharyngoepiglottic fold. Medially, it is bounded by the aryepiglottic fold and the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. So this is the aryepiglottic fold from here to here, and this is the lamina. So these together form the medial boundary. This is where foreign bodies can get entrapped. This is also known as the smuggler's fossa. While we are removing a foreign body, we are also likely to injure two important neurovascular structures. One neurovascular structure runs from above down like this under the mucous membrane of the laryngopharynx. That is the internal laryngeal nerve and the artery. And another neurovascular structure runs from below like this. That is the inferior laryngeal nerve and artery. So these structures can be injured when we are doing an endoscopic removal of foreign body. That's another clinical correlation pertaining to the laryngopharynx. And rarely we can have a sinus from the laryngopharynx to the thyroid gland. And that is known as the sinus of pyriform fossa. That's not a very common condition, but when it does exist, it can produce infection, which can travel from the laryngopharynx to the thyroid and can produce what is known as recurrent thyroiditis. Having described the laryngopharynx, now let's come to the interior of the larynx itself. So we have split open the larynx, which is anterior to the laryngopharynx. And now we are seeing it from inside. First, let's take a look at the parts. So I will hold it up like this. This is the laryngeal inlet. The laryngeal inlet is here. Then we have the laryngeal vestibule. Then we have the space between the two vestibular ligaments. This is called the rima vestibuli. Then we have the mid laryngeal cavity. Then we have the rima glottidis. And then we have the infraglottic cavity. 
and further down it becomes the trachea. Having mentioned the parts of the laryngeal cavity, let's take a look at some other structures. This is the epiglottis as I mentioned. So therefore this is the adiepiglottic fold, which is the upper free margin of the quadrangular membrane. The next structure that we see here is this elevation here and this elevation. This is the vestibular fold, which is the lower free margin of the quadrangular membrane. And this is what is known as the false vocal cord. Then between the true vocal cord and the false vocal cord, we can see the slit-like gap here. This is called the laryngeal ventricle. And the space between the two false vocal cords is called the rima vestibuli. And the space between the two true vocal cords is called the rima glottidis. And the space in between is called the mid laryngeal cavity. The true vocal cord is formed by the upper free margin of the cona silasticus or the creco vocal membrane. The lower margin of that is not free, it forms the lateral cricothyroid ligament. So these are the components that we can see on the interior of the larynx. This laryngeal ventricle, it continues laterally up to form what is known as the laryngeal saccule, which contains mucus glands, which secrete mucus to lubricate and motion the ventricle, the vocal cords. We can see that this is the mucous membrane of the larynx. And once we remove the mucous membrane inside, we can see this is the cricoid lamina. The cricoid cartilage posteriorly is wide and that is known as the lamina of the cricoid cartilage. So these are the structures which I wanted to show you in the interior of the laryngopharynx and the interior of the larynx. Thank you very much for watching. Dr. Sanjo Sanyal signing out. Mr. Kendall Cumberbatch is the camera person. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment section below. Have a nice day. Please like and subscribe.